Welcome to, I guess, yet another typical British day. Yeah, I'm wanting some summer weather back right now. Anyway, what better way to get through the cold than in a heated, cooled and massaging luxury SUV? That is the BMW X540i. It's a bit of a special car this, so let's take a look round it, then take it for a drive. My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Now then, what does the 40i mean? Well, it means this big ol' SUV uses a now well-known B58 inline-six petrol engine. It has a single twin-scroll turbo, which means its 450Nm of torque comes in very low at just 1500rpm, and it also means it makes good power up top. 340 horsepower to be exact. Another thing to note is just how low the engine is mounted in the chassis. That's BMW's way of saying this thing still handles, guys. I guess we'll find out whether it actually does later. But anyway, 0-60 is dismatched in just over 5 seconds. But what about once you're moving? Does the over 2 tonne weight of this thing slow it down on the 30-70 to 70 sprint? Let's find out. Well, for the numbers, this thing put up a good fight. We managed 5.54 seconds, and that puts it right around where it should be, given the size of this thing. However, to put this in perspective, a BMW M140i, basically a 1 Series with the same engine as this behemoth, managed 3.82 seconds, nearly 2 seconds quicker. Yeah, weight certainly plays a factor. Anyway, I'd say it's worth it, as as soon as you enter the inside of this thing, you're greeted with an abundance of leather and fancy tech. Heated and cooled cup holders, large infotainment screens, and physical controls for the climate still. Very nice. Even the rear gets pretty lights, cup holders that stay out the way when you don't need them, and even some storage in the armrest. What you don't get, though, is a whole lot of room when compared to its competitors. Hmm. I mean, it's okay, but not stellar. The same theme continues when you try to get into the third row. After patiently waiting for the seat to finally get out of the way, you're greeted with space for those of a younger generation. As you can see here by my rather unsatisfied face. Good for kids, but just a no-no for adults. I mean, at least the boot's big though. Anyway, let's get on the road and see what happens when a BMW and an SUV meet. Well, there's a definite theme developing in these reviews, isn't there? And that is the crappy British weather. Today in another big SUV, this time the BMW X540i, and the first thing you notice in this generation of X5 is they have made the suspension so much better. Still sporty, still has that BMW feel, but it's just so well damped. I mean, it feels like a much more expensive car. I mean, now it is, but it's worth the money in my eyes already. Steering is nice and light. Again, suspension going over speed bumps. It's like there's a suggestion of a speed bump rather than an actual speed bump there. Sound deadening is just marvelous in this thing. And it's just easy to drive. That B58 engine combined with a ZF8 speed gearbox is just a match made in heaven. And it is so nice, even to drive around town. It's strange, like, petrol SUVs usually only start getting good when you have really powerful ones, but, yeah, even though this is only 340 horsepower, it feels like way more, just because you've got so much torque low down. Then seats, in terms of seating position, can't fault it at all. It's got that lovely, low-slung seating position. You feel like you're sitting in the car. You feel cocooned. You feel safe. You feel away from the elements as well. And in terms of comfort, they're fantastic. This particular car has the like fully adjustable, I think they're 18 way seats. So you can adjust the pitch of the upper backrest as well. You can see there on the screen, if I look a little bit closer. So if you have a bit of an arch back like me, <laughs> you can get some uh, more headrest support, which is nice. Oh, I just, I can't believe how smooth this car is. And the engine just has this really nice grumble to it that I love. 
it's not necessarily sporty, but it's it's got this like sporty edge to it that's really nice. Now, in terms of parking, this is where the X5 does get a little bit tricky, uh, and that's because it's just huge. <laughs> uh, thankfully, we have a 360 camera system on this. You've got plenty of steering angle. Look at that. And yes, the only problem is when you're used to traditional parking, it gets a bit nervous. And getting into a space in one go is, yeah, it's a bit difficult. Once you're used to the size, you might be able to do it, but you do need quite a bit of room in this thing. And as you can see on the 360 camera system, I am pretty much touching the cars either side, <laughs> even though I'm within the parking space. So yeah, getting out, like, just, just getting to the first notch, but it's not one of those cars where you can swing the door open. So if you're driving this thing around a city, you do have to be a little bit more cautious, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, coming out of junctions, start, stop, not turning the engine off for some reason. Anyway, half roll at the junction, even in the wet, it just grips and goes. X drive feels fantastic. You get a really nice feeling of rear drive bias in this car doesn't really feel like the front's doing anything, it just kind of feels like it's a rear wheel drive car with a lot of grip, which is really nice. Then in terms of MPG, you're supposed to get 32 miles per gallon out of this thing. So we're going to reset it now and see what we can get on the motorway. But as usual, before we get on the motorway, let's take this thing around a roundabout and then have some fun. Okay then, it's a wet day and we're in a BMW. It is an SUV though. Despite that, we're going to see how this thing handles. Into sports mode, it's going to lower the car because we have air suspension. Change the dash into a, a red, more aggressive setting. Let's get the traction into sports as well. Gearbox into sports. This will hold on to gears longer and make the shifts a little bit more aggressive. Right, let's let people sort themselves out and see what happens. <laughs> it's still a BMW. Oh my God. Heads up display changes as well. Gives you a nice rev counter if I squat down. You should hopefully be able to see it a little bit. But yeah, this thing feels sprightly. It's amazing how they can make what is a fundamentally very large car feel very car-like. You get this weird feeling of like, you're sitting high up, yet the chassis kind of feels like it's really tied to the ground. It's lovely. Steering, that's where SUVs do lack a bit. It's kind of just, I mean, it's like playing Gran Turismo, basically. Not a lot of steering feel and not a lot of weight, actually, which is surprising for BMW. Usually they go comically heavy on their steering. Anyway, let's go into Eco now, get the traction control back on as well. See what kind of MPG we can manage. Currently sitting at 15 and a half. That will go up, though. Um, if I get, like, 28 miles per gallon out of this thing, I'll kind of be happy because there's not a lot of petrol SUVs that can get 30 mpg on a long run. Anyway, coming onto the motorway, even in eco, you still get a nice amount of boost from this engine. Just kind of gently press the throttle, don't need to give it half throttle or anything, and you just kind of glide up to your desired speed. And this is where you start to notice the difference between this generation of X5 and the previous generation. The sound ending in this car is, I mean, it's unbelievably good. This is, I would say, about 90% as good as a Mercedes S-Class inside. And yeah, get your cruise control on. It's just wonderful. You could, I mean, you could do like 12 hours in this car and you would be totally fine you can get your massage seat on if you want to and yeah it's just unbelievably nice to drive even in the rain you know there's pretty heavy rain at the minute and yeah you can hear it but it's not intrusive you can have a normal level conversation in this thing at 70 miles an hour even when it's tipping down yeah visibility is very good even though you're low slung so your arms are sort of touching the armrests which is nice You've still got huge windows, which makes it really easy to see out of the car. Uh, which means also your blind spot is really easy to check as well. You don't actually need a blind spot monitor in this car. I mean, the only time you would need it is if your kids have the blinds up in the back, 
first world problems, eh? But yeah, this, I mean, comparing this now to an Audi Q7, they feel on a very similar playing field. Before, the X5 was very much the handling kind of car in of the SUV world. Now, it does that, but it also matches the Audi in terms of just daily comfort and daily livability, which is very impressive because the Audi is very good. So yeah, for, for the school trip, for the long motorway journeys, this is already a wonderful car to spend a lot of time in. Anyway, let's go on the motorway and see if we can get around 28 miles per gallon. I'll be happy if we can do that. today couldn't quite get the figure I wanted but still doing 26 and a half and it is going up very quickly so there's no doubt in my mind over a longer journey you're gonna get 30 mpg out of this thing which for a petrol SUV with seven seats I'd call that a win if I were you I think that's pretty decent now if you're doing a lot of motorway miles I'd still go for the diesel but if you're doing like school runs and stuff, I think the petrol's a bit better because you're not clogging up the DPF then. Anyway, let's get onto a B road now and have some proper fun because this is a BMW after all. Okay then, back in sports plus. Traction in sports as well. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> Suspension is still quite soft even in sports plus. And traction control does kick in fairly early. Also, some fake noise coming into the car, I noticed. But it's quite nice, you know, it's quite grumbly. But yeah, steering's still fairly dead. Doesn't really weight that much, but it's an SUV, so not a lot you can do with that. Then brakes, they work, but they're not the most confidence inspiring. BMW always have this, like, very slightly spongy feel to them. Let's do a sound check, see so what this thing sounds like from the outside. Quite nice really, isn't it? And then yeah, it kind of it tightens its line nicely. There's not a lot to complain about. <laughs> that fake noise though. Quite a bit of lean in the corners. on the lower setting it's certainly not a sports car but for a big seven-seater SUV I mean it's no Range Rover I'll give you that it has a very nice like soft but balanced feel to it that's one thing BMW really do need to work on though like their M cars have really nice brakes, but their M Sport cars, they just have this like quite spongy feel to them, which I'm not too sure about. <laughs> but the front end has so much grip in this thing. Like the thing is, if you try and make it understeer, it just sends more power to the back. And it's not slow either, is it? I mean, do you need a car that's quicker than this? Not really. Even then, you can just map it. It's a B58 after all. You can download an extra 80 to 100 horsepower in this thing. You know, in my mind, I'd say the suspension could be a tad stiffer, but then does it really need to be, do you, like, on a daily drive basis, do you want that out of your SUV? You know, it handles well, it's just quite soft. I, it's hard to judge really, because you kind of want it to like, do the best of both worlds, but then 
you always end up compromising in one way or another. There's a lot of cars that try and be really comfortable and then end up kind of being, yeah, a little bit too comfortable, or they try and be comfortable and sporty and then they end up just kind of being neither. This car is definitely more on the comfort side. I think just having a balanced chassis really helps it out. Feel the traction control really intervening then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you turn the traction all the way off in this thing, you'll do big burnouts in it because it's a lot of weight and it likes to send power to the rear wheels. I'm not complaining though. Anyway, let's see how this behemoth does down a smaller B road because that's where air suspension starts to uh, find its limits. Okay, let's go. Lovely pickup from this engine, as always. Car seems a little bit delayed. It's not super sharp when it comes to steering. But, I mean, it's a big SUV, so does it need to be? Suspension over those bumps, very good indeed. Over the big one, not bad, actually. A little bit of flutiness, but for an SUV, not too bad. Brakes, yeah, not super confident in inspiring. <laughs> it really likes sending power to the back. Okay, will we make it to 60 before the corner? Missed a gear shift there, really, so that's my fault. But we still made it. Very nice. It's just that mid range torque you get from this engine that's lovely. I am finding myself having to slow down a bit for those bumps though. I think it's more because I just want to be cautious of any oncoming traffic, make sure I don't scare them. But Yeah, I mean give it throttle and it tightens its line nicely. Didn't miss a gear shift that time. Boy, is it quick, this thing. A uh, tiny bit of understeer there. And a tiny bit of traffic with what looks to be an exhaust hanging off. Interesting. But yeah, this it still has that typical BMW DNA, this, which is nice. Bit of oversteer, doesn't really understeer. The only thing that's a bit different is it's a bit floatier. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're not going to be driving this car like that on B roads all the time, are you? You're going to be sitting on the motorway with the cruise control on, kids in the back, making a noise, and you're just going to want to be comfortable. And that, this BMW does insanely well. In conclusion then, the main takeaway from this video for me is they have revamped this car to a level that is, I mean, just different from the previous car. You know, it's not like the old Audi Q7 going to the new one. This is a serious level above. Like, this is closer to a Rolls-Royce than you might expect. You know, material quality is obviously different. But the build quality itself, as in the way everything's been put together, is really not far off. This is a seriously well-built car. No rattles, no squeaks. Just everything that was wrong with the previous car, they got right with this. My only negative is that they might have gone a tiny bit too far in terms of softness on the suspension, but that's just my own personal opinion. Most people that drive this thing every day are gonna want a car that's just comfortable and reliable. And surprisingly, even though it's BMW, it's got the B58, which is a very reliable engine indeed. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like and why not subscribe? As not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale, which unfortunately no longer includes this absolutely wonderful BMW X540i. But it's worth going into the description and having a look at everything else we've got for sale. Anyway, 
But yeah, my name's Tom, and you've been watching Power of Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.